Hi, this is Jared from Shunome, and today I want to talk about two big things. One, the Shunome Open Template version 28 for ARCHICAD 28, and then in general, some of my thoughts about ARCHICAD 28. So uh, even if you don't use my template, I think this video should still be valuable. First off, I want to talk about library changes. So ARCHICAD 28, one of the big changes is we've gone from individual localized libraries to the global libraries. So now every ARCHICAD user has access to all the libraries so that we're able to just, you know, someone in the US, someone in the UK, or in Russia or wherever, we can all have access to everything, which is great. So my template, one of the big changes in 28 was to transition from the old libraries to the global libraries. This means anyone who downloads a template, now you don't have to jump through the hoops of using the US libraries or switching everything. You can just open my template, switch to metric if you want to switch to metric, and get going. However, that's not 100% accurate. You'll still need one extra library. So if you look at number four on my screen right here, this template uses global libraries, but you will need the ARCHICAD Legacy Objects USA dot lcf so if we go to the libraries here you'll see i have loaded a whole bunch of library packages so we have access to all sorts of things and then i also need this archicad legacy objects library that is loaded now that library is only part of the archicad 28 usa package so when you download that version of archicad you get it if you download any other version you don't get it which is annoying. Fortunately, you can go to the URL on the screen right here. It's also links on my website. I have uploaded that library to my website so you can go and get it. You'll have to load that to my template and then you'll be all set. So that's getting libraries. Now with the changes to the libraries, I rebuilt all my favorites and we can open them up here. Uh, we're not gonna talk about keynotes just yet. We're gonna go up to windows and doors. This is the biggest change. I have abandoned the USA windows and doors um, and instead switched to the international windows and doors. Uh, my assumption is that Graphsoft will invest time into the international windows and doors. And even though they might say otherwise, I'm assuming the USA windows and doors will just be forgotten. So I'm getting rid of them. Now, one of the cool things about the international windows and doors as opposed to the US windows and doors, uh, if we just click on a window and open it up and go to uh, not shape, we wanna go to opening in here. Hopefully this list shows, I know I have some issues where pop-out windows, pop-out menus don't record properly. Uh, we have all the different types. So you can now go to fix sash or fix glass or tilt turn or double sash or, or sliding. And that's one window. So in my old template, I had an awning, a casement, a uh, double hung, et cetera, all those different favorites. Now I just have one window and that window does everything. Uh, except that I have actually a window for brick, exterior insulation and standard size siding. Why that is, is, let's, I'll show you here. Uh, the exterior casing is different. So if I have a wall like this and that's just standard siding, I can put in window and you can see casing sits there. If I change this to a brick wall, that's not how that's not the right siding condition. So I start with this brick favorite and I have that all set up. You don't have to understand how that works, but it does. Um, just because I like showing things, what that is, it's this third reveal setting under wall opening, and these settings are the right thickness or the right width of the trim and the right depth of the brick. So you just mess with those if you had something different. Um, and then the last trim condition is this for exterior side or for exterior insulation. How I typically do that is I'm using keyboard shortcuts here to go to my favorites. I'm going to type in uh, exterior, let's try insulation, uh, lap siding over winch insulation. So this is my favorite for insulation, um, oh, let's just show the whole thing. So there we have, now we have the trim sticking out. If I select this window, I can go to create openings, hit create opening, and that should have worked. 
I don't know why it didn't, so I have to pause this video and figure it out. Okay, so I paused the video and I figured out what was going on. Then I recorded this whole thing and then realized I actually didn't record the whole thing. I just talked to myself for 15 minutes. So now I have the solution and I'm pretty sure I'm recording. So what I discovered is that the international windows and doors in ARCHICAD don't function with the create selection or create opening from selection because there's some issue with the GDL code where wall hole, which is the thing that cuts the hole in the wall, uh, doesn't extend with the trim, which means if the window frame isn't interacting or intersecting with the siding or tile, like the secondary wall, then the window won't cut the hole in it. Super annoying. I'm actually kind of shocked I didn't know about this uh, because it's been an issue for years for people who use the international windows and doors. I've just never used them before to know this. I've created a wish list item on the Graphsoft community page. Uh, you can get to it in the description below or on the blog post that goes along with this video. So please go to that and like that so that we can get Graphsoft to know this is an issue and get it fixed. So there's two solutions I've found or to this issue and what I'll deal with. So the one which I don't like is to just abandon the international windows and doors and go back to the USA windows and doors. I'm not doing that. So one option is I can take the siding and I can move it back an inch. And now if I do create opening, now it works. But that's annoying. I don't want to move the siding because that's going to get complicated. The other option is I can temporarily move the window. So now create the opening. There have it. Then I just go back to reveal to wall face and set it to zero. That second one is going to be the fastest solution because I could see in a project selecting all the windows, changing this to negative one, create selection from opening, selecting all the windows, and making it back to zero. I hate that that's the solution, but it it works and it allows me to continue my current workflow and continues to allow me to to use these better windows. So. That's what I'll do. I'll just move the window in and out as necessary and live with it. OK, so that's that. Let's talk about a couple other uh, favorites before we move on to the next piece. So in addition to just tweaking all the favorites, there's two issues to know. One is that under model view options, you'll have to go through and update all these if you're just migrating your template. If you're using my template, you don't have to worry about it. But uh, model view options have gotten a lot more complicated just because they've separated things out and different groups of elements have their own thing. So detail level window uh, doors and windows for the international windows and doors. It has its own thing here. Legacy objects has its own thing. You know, you can just read the screen. So you'll have to go through and update this if you're migrating your template. If you're using my template again, you're good to go. So I recommend using my template, even if you use an augmented version of my template, rebuild yours from my 28 template. It's going to make your life easier. So got that. Uh, the next thing with favorites is when I migrated my favorites using the favorite migration add-on tool, most of the favorites came through, migrated no problem. But this detail level for many elements or for many objects switched to simple, simplified, which meant this symbol in this instance, was just a dumb rectangle uh, rather than by MVO, which allowed it to have the correct level of detail. So that's something else. If you're migrating a template, watch out for this 3D detail level. Unfortunately, one of the stupid things Graphsoft did was get rid of the 3D detail level set to off. So that's something we'll have to deal with. There's a couple of objects in my template that I've always had 3D detail level off, and I don't have a full answer of what I'm going to do there yet. So future Jared problem. OK. I've also added a couple of new favorites. Most of them are around uh, dog and cat bowls and trash cans uh, and kitty litter boxes. Uh, these are all things that, as an architect, I think about or forget to think about in designs. And I wanted to have these placeholders so that I can locate where my client's pets are going to eat, or I know where the little trash can is going to go in the bathroom. So I've added those to the, the template. I think there's some other favorites, but I'm not thinking of any of them at the moment. Okay, 
So that is favorites and objects. Next thing I want to talk about is design options. I've added one design option, and that's this wall legend. So down here, I used to have this under standard notes. It was just 2D here. But 3D is better because now this can be live and you can add to it easy. Uh, so by doing it in a design option, it can be hidden when you don't need it, so it's not going to show up in 3D. But you can then just use the right layers and the right tools and everything. So you just do everything you want, like normal, and then it's just hidden. What's great about this, too, is if it's hidden, it won't show up on a schedule. But you can also create a schedule that looks at only this design option. So I could actually schedule this wall legend if for some reason I wanted to. And you can extrapolate that out to be like, oh, you could place all your lights here or all your windows in a wall and have that as a separate design option. And now you start doing these like visual legends that you can describe all the stuff you want and then just hide it so it doesn't get in the way of the model. And then you can hide it from the schedule. So if you have 10 windows in a legend here, they don't show up on your window schedule and then get ordered. OK, that's design options. Last thing I want to talk about in this video are keynotes. OK. Now let's talk about keynotes. Before we talk about keynotes, though, I want to talk about this diagram. This is from a blog post I did on the GraphSoft North America blog like a decade or more ago. Unfortunately, I don't think the blog post still exists anywhere. I need to go back and rewrite it and update it, and keynotes would be a perfect time to do that. So what is this diagram talking about? It's talking about where your data lives. Uh, then, now, and soon. Again, this is 10 years ago, so we're kind of more in soon, and now is then, and then is ancient history, and I don't know what comes next. But the idea here is we have three types of data. View-based data, element-based data, and project-based data. Long time ago, when we did things by hand, everything was view-based, right? It's just what was on the sheet. Or we went to AutoCAD, and it was just what was in the, the view, right? There's no intelligence, it was just the stuff in front of you. Then we got to the now stage, which again is like ArchiCAD over the past decade, where we had some stuff that was in the view, right? We're still drawing notes in text in a section. We had some, el some data that was element-based, right? It is the window, it is the wall, it lives in there, it's an ArchiCAD property, et cetera. Then we had some information which was project data, project-based data. For the most part, that's like project information, or it's, you know, an attribute like a building material or a surface. And uh, my viewpoint is that as we move forward in time, we're not going to all element-based data. We're just getting rid of the view-based data and finding the right balance between element-based data and project-based data. Because not everything should live in an element. A lot of things should just live in the file. And that's where keynotes come in. So I have hardly ever use keynotes in projects. I don't really like them, and I don't think they're valuable in a BIM program because keynotes are just shortcuts. But we don't need shortcuts because we can just have all the information everywhere if we want it to be. So how am I using keynotes? Well, a couple things. One, I've been using them as a to-do list. So I you know, create this and I say, this is a window fix. And then in here, I might write, uh, the client said on this day to, to do that. So now um, this just lives in the project. And instead of having to look at some written list in a notebook on my desk or go to a Google Doc or look at the whiteboard, I can just look in ArchiCAD and I can track this. And so if I'm in a meeting, I'm presenting to the client in ArchiCAD, I can create the to-do list in ArchiCAD as we go as a keynote. So that's one thing I have. The next thing I have here is codes. This is another thing where I'm working on a project, I'm doing research, and uh, I find some important code. And I write it somewhere safe that I'm never going to get, that I forget about it, and I don't know where it is. So now I'm going to use keynotes, and I'm going to put, you know, this code section is 23.042, whatever, dot, 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 D. And then here is all the text of the code, and then it's from the, you know, the IRC 2021, right? So now that's all there in the project. And I don't have to lose it. And then, of course, if this needs to actually be placed on a drawing somewhere, I can do that too. So I've got that. Uh, and then last, I have some typical notes. So I have uh, these notes, again, used to live in this standard notes. They were all here. And so now 
I have these notes that show up on all these projects. I have assembly notes that show up on all the projects. And then I have some demolition notes, again, stuff that shows in all the projects. Over time, I'm going to build out this list. But the idea here is I'm starting to use the keynotes for this stuff that I use all the time. And so here you go to favorites and I want keynote title. And so now I can place this. You can see that says thermal break at slab. And if I click on that and do that, now it says door headers. So now I'm using these keynotes to just write out the full notes that I always wanted. And what I love about this is actually, if I realize that all my one hour rated walls or two hour rated walls, I do that and it's fixed everywhere. So now I'm taking my, you know, my view based data, this stuff, and I'm pushing it here to get to more project based data. And I think that is phenomenal. Last thing here with assembly notes, uh, I have one of the great things in ArchiCAD 28 is label favorites, remember um, formatting. So I have here assembly note, and now I click, it not only gets the right um, like arrow type, but it also puts the title in bold and the other stuff in not bold. So I have all this information and I, I can get it displayed the way I want. And then as the project evolves, if my roof construction here becomes, you know, metal, now I just do that, you know, it fixes it there. So again, once you're set up and as the project evolves, now I'm just looking at the assembly notes in the keynote list to make all my changes. Yes, there's the issue of this is disassociated from the elements. So if the model changes, I still have to update the keynote rather than just having the model feed the note. But there's a question of whether you want the model to actually feed all the notes and you want those notes linked or if you want them separated. And that's, that's beyond the scope of this conversation. That's like just a whole philosophical question of like, I'm not here to, to support one or the other. I'm just saying like, this is how I'm experimenting. This is how I'm using it. I think there's huge value to that. So that's my ArchiCAD 28 template. Remember, go and download it. It's free if you want it to be. I really appreciate the support, but I just want people to use ArchiCAD as the best they can. Like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, do all those things that's beneficial to me, but really just download the template and make life easier with ArchiCAD. Thank you very much. Have a great day.